Do you know if you went to see your GP, what they would do if yeah. they suspected prostate yeah. cancer? Yeah, isn't, do you not get a finger up the bum? I recently asked some men if they knew the potential signs and symptoms of prostate cancer and what would happen if they went to their doctor about them. Now, unfortunately, many didn't know any of the potential signs or symptoms. Do you know what signs and symptoms you might have if you've got prostate cancer? I'm not too sure, to be honest. I'm not 100% certain, no. Can you Absolutely no idea. Now, this is a problem because prostate cancer is the most common cancer among men in the UK. In fact, over 35,000 men died from prostate cancer in 2023 alone. Prostate cancer can affect men of all ages, but the risk increases as men get older, especially after 50. It's also more common in black men than in white men. And if you're a black man watching this video, I've made another video specifically for you. Check out the description box for the link. Now, thankfully, some men were aware of common signs and symptoms of prostate cancer. Uh, I don't really know the sign. Well, yes, I do, probably. Yeah, we go to the toilet a lot, perhaps. Problems with urinating. As far as I'm aware, um, indications to look into things would be things like um, having trouble urinating. Um, that's kind of the main one I'm aware of. Now, all of these men are correct in that problems peeing or urinating are potential signs and symptoms of prostate cancer. Now, these problems peeing can include needing to pee more frequently, especially at night time, urgency to urinate, difficulty starting to pee, known as hesitancy, straining or taking a long time to pee, weak urine flow, feeling like your bladder hasn't fully emptied, as well as blood in your urine and semen. However, it's important to know that having these symptoms doesn't necessarily mean that you've got prostate cancer. For example, needing to pee more at night can also be caused by benign prostatic hypertrophy, a non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate that is actually quite common as men get older. I also asked men about other potential symptoms beyond urinary issues, but no one I interviewed could name them. Um, drawing a bit of a blank on other uh, symptoms potentially. Now, what I was hoping some of these men might know is that prostate cancer that spreads beyond the prostate, also known as metastatic prostate cancer, can cause symptoms elsewhere in the body, like pain in the back, hips or pelvis, difficulty getting or maintaining an erection, blood in the urine or semen, like I already mentioned, as well as unexplained weight loss. Now, if you experience any of these symptoms or changes in your urinary habits, please do go see a doctor. It might not be prostate cancer, but it's important to get checked. So now, what happens when you actually go and visit your doctor? Well, I asked people this question too, and here's what they knew. Um, and if you do go see your GP, do you know what they might do to check for prostate cancer? I would imagine there would be uh, sort of interviews about kind of what um, symptoms you might be having. So this gentleman's right. Your doctor will start off by taking your medical history, meaning that they'll ask you about your symptoms, how long you've had them, your general health, any medications you're taking, as well as your family history, especially if anyone in the family has had prostate or other cancers. Now, after this, what would they do? I assume they would check it in some capacity. Again, this is totally right. Your doctor's going to need to examine your prostate to see what it feels like. So how does this actually happen? There might be a, uh, a manual check of the prostate. Yeah. And do you know what would, that would happen when you have a manual check of the prostate? Uh, yes, as far as I know, it would be a digital examination um, of the prostate internally. Again, totally right. Now this involves a quick rectal examination. With your consent, your doctor will ask you to lie on your side with your knees pulled up. They'll use a gloved, lubricated finger to check the size, the shape, and feel your prostate, looking for any hard areas or lumps. Now, the exam typically takes less than a minute, and it's routine for doctors, so there's no need to feel embarrassed. Now, I've actually had it done myself, and it was quick, easy, and painless. Now, if you'd feel more comfortable, you can request something called a chaperone, which can be a friend or family member to be present in the room with you. In addition to taking a history, as well as doing a physical exam to check for the prostate, your doctor will want to do a few other things. And do you know if they do anything else? Um, I don't need to check your wee to make you pee in a bottle. Okay. First, they might request a urine sample to look for any signs of infection, which would actually point away from prostate cancer. The urine sample might also show whether there's any signs of microscopic blood in your urine. And would they do any blood tests, do you think? I wouldn't know. Exactly. Yeah. And would they do any blood tests or anything? I would presume so, but I wouldn't know for sure. Well, I've had the test. Okay, and what, what was the test? Um... 
bit was it the PSA test I can't remember and some other test which is a bit more personal yeah exactly uh, uh, now you might not have caught what this gentleman said but he said a PSA test so your doctor might also order a blood test called a PSA test now this measures prostate specific antigen a protein made by the prostate high levels of PSA can indicate prostate cancer but it's not a perfect test because PSA can also rise due to non-cancerous conditions like benign prostatic enlargement, like I mentioned earlier, prostatitis, and even after vigorous exercise. The other thing is that PSA levels naturally increase with age too. Now your doctor should explain the pros as well as the cons of PSA testing so that you can make an informed decision. Now for more on PSA tests, please check out this excellent video by Dr. James Gill linked in the description box. Now, if you're a black man aged 40 or older, I strongly recommend speaking to your doctor about your prostate cancer risk and whether a PSA test might be right for you. And to help, I've included guidance from Prostate Cancer UK in the description box, and you can use this to advocate for yourself during the appointment. Finally, if you found this video helpful, please do share it with friends or family. And if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to respond to you.